every clear night that I get, I bring the rig out from the shed back there and I set it up. First thing you gotta do is you gotta pull our line. With the ASI Air, the Pro, or the Plus, I have the Plus here, sometimes it goes very smoothly and sometimes it just, it just wants to fight you. So, I've kind of put together a list of all the different things that I kind of like to do when plate solving gives me issues while I'm polar lining. So the first thing we're going to start with is actually the refresh. Now, the refresh, the auto refresh button is right here. And this is typically what I use, okay? It's nice and quick and easy. However, sometimes, you know, if you're having one of those nights where it just doesn't want to plate solve, I found that by turning that off and hitting the refresh button myself manually, this has just about always improved the plate solving for basically, you know, doing polar alignment. And I think the reason for this is because with auto refresh activated, the camera's consistently throwing pictures at the ASI Air and it's giving it stuff to think about. And it may be a little bit too much for the ASI Air to process all that data while also taking pictures in the background. By turning off auto and just hitting refresh manually, yeah, it plates all faster and it seems to do it when it always fails. Now, there's a couple of other things that we can do. We can go into the camera here. We can increase the gain, you know, push that gain all the way up. If you're not getting enough stars, that's a great thing to do. Another thing to do is actually to change or select another filter. Now, any of your filters that are in the red spectrum, like the sulfur filter, the hydrogen filter, or just your red filter from your RGB camera filter set, those are great filters to use if there's a little bit of twilight still in the sky. You know, this, this way you can actually start plate solving and then get your plate solving and your polar alignment all done well before it's completely dark and you start your imaging session. So that's another thing that you can do. Now, the last thing that you wanna do, okay? This is the most extreme one. So typically the field of view of my main imaging camera is, you know, it's smaller than my red scope. What we'll actually do is we'll actually switch cameras that we're using to do the plate solving. To do that, you know, we're gonna first go in here, we're actually gonna turn off this guy. And then we're also gonna turn off the guide scope. And we're gonna come back here and I'm actually gonna select the guide camera and the guide scope as our imaging camera. And I'm, do not forget to change the focal length, of course. All right, make sure you change the focal length. The plate solving will not work. And then we turn that back on. And whenever I've done this, like this is this is my stop gap. If everything else fails, this is what I do. This gives you a nice big wide field of view. Also, my guide scope has a smaller number of megapixels. So it's very quick and it's very easy for the ASI Air to process that data and to plate solve with it. And that right there has been my best, best way to plate solve and do my polar alignment. If everything else fails, that's the one I go to. So, hope these tips help you. I know plate solving, uh, with, when you're trying to polar align, you just wanna start imaging, and this will make it easier for you.